Hey, what's up guys? Malt here. And let's finish up this game. I assume. I assume that's what we're doing right now. Anyways, everyone noticed unusual driving. So let's go. I guess she was... She was driving a little weirdly. I suspected all along. Oh, buzz off, Keisuke. You were just in the dark as... You were as in the dark as the rest of us. When all four of you started the ace race... The real Clara was sit sitting in Trey's car further down the course. Trey hung back, and at the right moment... He turned off his headlights, and at that moment, Jocelyn struck something. I can't quite prove this, but I believe it was the wheel that Ren brought to the courtroom earlier today. Then, all, the all Trey had to do was take the side road, speed back to the top of the course, and you three carried on when you found, when you found Clara. You seen that she had somehow passed you and crashed. For us sitting here in this courtroom, it almost seems nonsensical, but your collective heightened state, awash with adrenaline, it was only the only sensible explanation. So naturally, you all believed it. Discussing it among yourselves before Ryoko and Trey turned up, you made it real, at least for you. I can hardly believe it. Trey turned up with Ryoko. He looked us in the eye, knowing that we were going to take the fall. He was utterly convincing. It does kind of prove something, though. What? Things really aren't always what they appear to be. People can fake many things, but your style will always reveal what some who someone really is. Style. Let's file that out as one for later. When I when I see um, Trey next, I'll I'll speak for yourself. Even after all this, I'm not angry. I kind of feel sorry for him. And on that note, Your Honor, the defense rests. Very good, Miss Aquila. Mr. Hawk, do you have anything to add? Hmm. Only one thing. Surely he hasn't got. Not bad, Miss Aquila. You want to congratulate Dylan, too? Don't push your luck. Very well. Miss Aquila has, through, inter through inference, all but proven that Clara died long before the defendants were close by. Therefore, on all charges, I find the defendants... Not guilty. Yeah. We did it, everybody! The music just cut off, okay. The Aces said we should meet them over at the Great Wave. You wanna head straight there? In a bit. Before we do that, can we stop off and stop in at the office? Sure. To the office. <coughs> Why are we here? The Aces were heading straight to the restaurant, Nina. What are we doing back here? I had an idea during the trial. This will only take a minute. You sure? I don't know, but if it doesn't, then this will be the last time I watch the security footage. Something about her style? <laughs> what was that Case Case said? Style. He said something about style defining who you are no matter what. Things really aren't what they appear to be. Always what they appear to be. People can fake many things. But style... will always reveal who someone really is. There! What is it? What did you see? Look! I don't get it. It's just a guy wearing a baseball cap. That's right. But it's a matter of style. He's wearing it... The wrong way around. In all the prior footage, the janitor wore his cap backwards, but this guy's wearing his forward. Here's a comparison. Wow, oh, you're right. I never noticed it before. I mean, it's easy to ignore. You gotta just turn it around, though. Maybe, well, let's watch him a bit more. That's it. It's like a smudge. More than a smudge. It's a facial scar. Did the janitor have his facial scar? You must have met him during Anya's trial, right? No, he doesn't. What does that mean? It's simple. That man, whoever he was, was an imposter. And we have to go to- you have to go see Chadhawk's boss in right away. What is it, Nina? Surely this is the break in the case we've been waiting for? It is, but as much as I hate to admit it, this is a lead, not real evidence. If we go on- if we go off half-cocked, we might lose our chance to convince the DA to open up an appeal. We need to search for definitive evidence. Oh. And that was all fired up. Don't douse yourself yet, huh? This is just a start. A lead is something we can unravel until it run until we run out of thread. 
So, are we gonna still going out for the food with the aces? Sounds good. We're not gonna find more clues about this when it's late at night, and we're exhausted from another case. Let's head out. Great, come meet by the door when you're ready. <coughs> Guess that's the hint for what's going on in the next chapter. Yeah, it is? Yeah. Are you ready to head out? Are you ready to red out? Yes. Let's go. Okay, boss. Dylan Merlot has joined the party. To the big wave. That is the convenience store. I meant to the great wave. Hey! <coughs> Come pie! The Great Wave Sushi Restaurant, general, January 11th, 7.41 p.m. Guys seen any tuna yet? No, but I see plenty of salmon. Maybe you can order some. Uh, fish makes me nauseous. Then why did you agree to come? I was outvoted. I wanted to go to the steakhouse downtown. There's gotta be something you can eat. I swear I just saw a cheeseburger pass by us a few minutes ago. I might go for one of those myself. Seriously? This is a nice sushi place. What? I like cheeseburgers. Well, now that we're all here, Nina, I think I speak for everyone when I say that we simply can't thank you enough. Why is there a teddy bear on the belt? Who's gonna eat that? That's right, no one else had any idea about Trey's actions. How did you even figure it out? For starters, it was a group effort. You should be thanking Dylan and Rena just as much as I. Plus, we had some help at the last minute, without which things would have gone differently. Help from who? Jasper Frank. He turned up to our office late at night. Late last night. That old cook? He totally really hates us. He was weird, always skulking around, picking up trash, telling us to park better, giving us aggro. Seems weird he would even get involved. I wonder why Jasper decided to help. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he knows anything about Tuz Jenkins racing. Oh, I'm not so sure. I never use a Spades J and Q vacation for anything. But, uh... I don't really know what to use here. I never use this for anything either. Late, la last fatality. Fatality in mountain racing. It was 19... It was in 1981. Great, this is gonna be as hard as the rest of this game was. to do with this is he like hidden in this somewhere doesn't look like it I like all the work that was put into the ambience in these like areas and stuff the sound effects and stuff in the background I really appreciate that I know it's a bit it's a bit of work to do something like that Also, all, all the sounds in general. Something from a long time ago. Okay, so it's a 1981 incident. What? Seriously? Years. Literally years, and he never said a word. From what I understand, the 1981 incident brought mountain racing to disrepute. Disrepute. And almost ended it once and for all. Plus, Jasper, if he is responsible, lost a close friend, a rival ace. I can't be totally certain, but I make a career out of connecting up the dots. Jasper said that Clara knew him, and I, th I think that's what he meant. So you're saying Jasper Frank was the very first Joker. Well, I'm starving. Wait up, I got a few questions myself. Firstly, who is Joker now? Did you guys figure it out? We decided it should be a Hank. It seems sensible. Ah, oh, shucks, guys. Hank has a vision for how we're going to move forward as a family. So you're accepting the sponsorship? 
Not right away. Claire obviously had some personal beef with this monster, whoever they are. But doing something like that is important for securing the roster racer's future. I don't know what it's what form it's gonna take. My goal is to see us form a professional racing team. Some form of sponsorship is gonna be involved in that. Well I wish you guys the best of luck. Hi. Ryoko. Oof, awkward. You gonna eat with us, Ryoko? I No. I just wanted to Oh come on, Ryoko, have something to eat with us. Sorry, but I'm not quite there yet. It's okay, Ryoko, we respect that, but I'm happy that everything worked out. I just wanted to let you guys know that. Do you want Clara's keys back? No, there's no need. They're just the keys to a car that never belonged to me. You keep them. Maybe they'll bring you luck. Guys, Clara's funeral is the day after tomorrow, and afterwards, I'm gonna head out of town for a few weeks. But I'll be back. Actually, we had something we wanted to talk to you about. Case you wanna tell her? Oh, it's not my place. You should, Hank. You should, Hank. Okay, Ryoko, when you come back, we'd like you to do so as the new Ace of Spades. How about it? Wow. I... I don't know what to say. Say yes. I guess I could give you guys a run for your money. That's the spirit. Enough talk, I'm starving. Food first, then lucky voice. Lucky voice? It's a karaoke bar. With an all-you-can-drink policy. Sounds like my kind of party. I think I'll pass. I've got some attorney stuff to take care of to wrap everything up. Oh, then I should... You should go with them, Dylan. You sure? You okay? It's fine, really. Sure. I'll do karaoke with you guys, but be warned, I can't sing. None of us can. I may have dodged a bullet there. Have a great time, guys. Ooh, that gives me an idea. Real quick, darling, before you leave. Hank, you scooch in there. Hank, get your elbow out of my... That's Joker, Hank, to you. Ooh, boy. Jocelyn, crouch down a bit. Like this? Okay. Say California rolls. Hey, we're all in this picture, and I just totally took her place. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> Akila Defense and Law Offices, January 13th, uh, 123 a.m. One, two, three, go. Middle of the night again? Nina, stay here, okay? Why? What? I'll be right back. Don't go. Stay with her, okay? What was that? That was quick. She was standing right there. Maybe if I'm able to see that spot again where she was standing. It's a long shot, but I need to know. No. My f legs feel like jelly, and my heart is beating out a drum solo. Why am I breaking out in a cold sweat just trying to remember who she is? I came all the way up here. I'm not just going to turn around and go home. Deep breath. Who are you? I don't even know you, but I can picture you in my head with perfect clarity. Better than Dylan. Better than Anya. I remember. Years ago, you looked right into my eyes and... That's... That's it. How? How could I have forgotten? Or maybe... Maybe I just didn't want to remember. She was there on that day. When everything changed. When she was the last person I ever saw. The very last thing I ever saw. With both eyes. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! They're talking about her eye patch story. Also, she's thick. She's definitely thick. Next time on Inakila Legal Legal. Stop, foul beast. 
Your evil will never take root in this world. By the power of the Sacred Feather, I will punish you! Valkyrie, transform! Cut. Was that okay? Fantastic, Milia. As always. No need to lay too thick, Sarah. It's just a location test. I'm serious. You're natural. You nail every single take. This show is gonna be awesome. I can see it. Valkyrie, Sacred Feather, sweeps the awards. How'd you get so good, anyhow? Practice, I guess? And this place, was this the location where the fight scenes really are- Was this location where the fight scenes really your idea? They said that they wanted somewhere industrial and remote, so it seemed like a good fit. It's great, so grimy and drab. It'll make the bright colors of your final costume really pop by comparison. Sarah, are we good? Yeah, I think we have everything we need for today. I mean, all we wanted was some footage of Melia in the location to compare to the other sites we've auditioned. I think we've got that and then some. You want to ride back? It's okay, I got my motorbike nearby. See you Monday morning? Looking forward to it. Safe trip home. You too. Okay, we're out. Let's pack it up. It's still around here. I can sense it. Show yourself! <laughs> Foolish Valkyrie. This city will kneel at the feet of the great Malfara! Not today. By the powers of the Sacred Feather, Valkyrie! Transform! Let's rumble, dog breath! Okay. So we have a... We have a magical girl thing happening next episode, I guess. Or chapter. Hey, Anya! We're shooting in five minutes! Oh, so they do need me after all? Anya, we talked about this. You're not gonna have lines every single episode. Easy for you to say. The whole show is named after you. Do I smell liquor? Have you been drinking? It's just some tequila. You want some? Yes. If I gotta keep wearing this hand-me-down bunny girl outfit. Guys, I think the director wants to get this party started. Our, parties are start our party started about an hour ago. Goggle boy. Is she? A little. Then are you? Not as much. The show must go on, am I right? Hello. Welcome to Aquila Channel. A special fa viewer facing segment where we talk to you, the viewer player. Today's chapter was themed around several things, most notably the street racing manga and anime genre. And the fans of those shows will have doubt doubtless not have noticed some of the similarities. Ooh, there's nail tees now? Uh, every, even the pre cars present, present in game and some of the properties attributed to them are parodies of real world cars. The design of Nina's car was an extra special reference. Did you spot it? Chapter 3's. Chapter 3's twist was inspired by the fourth stage of Initial D. In that show, there's a scene where a ca character encounters a mysterious car with darkened windows with an oddly familiar driving style. Hashtag no spoilers. The sp point was that the car- I've never actually watched Initial D myself, so that's- Okay. The point was that a car could also be a disguise- uh, could also be a disguise and it seemed like a cool idea to build upon. However, we knew that if we were going to take on the illegal street racing genre, we need to allow the player to actually race. The version in the final game was actually the third prototype of the racing system. The end of a process which, on its own, took around three months to develop. Wow. This was inspired by in concept, in concept by Tactics Formula, a, ra a Japanese exclusive game for the Sega Saturn, in which racing is, an is handled on RPG-like turns. So, uh, though Nails, Tooze, Jank, and Racing took this in a very different direction. Of course, Tooze, uh, Racing is actually a real thing. It's not just something seen in anime. Though an animated form, it tends to be depicted in, like in sports anime. And like any sports anime, it's heavily dramatized. Tuj or Toge... Oh, is that how you're supposed to pronounce it? Toge? Means pass, as in mountain pass. It has its roots in illegal mountain road racing. Through the success of Initial D, it has a strong association with the mountain roads of Gunma Ken. In the Kanto regions of Japan, particularly, particularly in, uh, in the ha town of Haru the town of Haruna, which has already been, uh, which has been part of nearby Takasaki since 2006. Additionally, we wanted a story where Nina, having found some confidence in Chapter 2, would find strength in her own unique style both in and out of the car. Wait, as a lawyer, should Nina really have been engaging in le illegal street racing? Probably not best to, best not to overthink it. Chapter 3's uh, story drew on all three all of these elements. Toge uh, racing anime, using a car as a disguise, and the desire to find faith in one's unique own unique style. Of course, these are just the main threads of the plot. A lot of the other stuff is packed in there too. Okay, so now that chapter three, we, that's chapter three out of the way. On to the news. First, we want to thank all of our followers, friends, and supporters. In particular, we'd like to thank the members of the Nail Discord. If you want to join the Discord, you can find the link in the games.io page. 
Nail also has its own Twitter page, and there's a link over there on the t uh, game's title screen. We're going to be hosting more giveaways via Twitter, so make sure you follow. Make sure to follow up if you're a fan. The Nail T Public Store has a wide range of merch, including hoodies and mugs. Sales of merch are funneled directly into the paying of paying for more CGs, sprite art, and other features of future chapters. And this is a biggie. We want to welcome Rachel Messer, who is now Nina's voice actor. Oh yeah, I did. You did a good job, Rachel. Rachel comes to Nail from an extensive background in anime and video game voice acting. Now it's time for us to sign off. But before we go, I remember after playing this game, please consider leaving a review in HIO. A review can be a star rating, but it makes an enormous difference to how many people try out the game. It takes seconds, but it's one of the most ho helpful things that fans can do to support an indie game. As always, tell your friends! Chapter 4 is going to be a magical adventure with mysteries, sec secret identities, and intrigue. And magical girls! So, if you like this third chapter of Nina Kill Illegal Legal, Nailer! 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 <laughs> Follow for more news about Chapter 4. Sacred Feathers! Hey. Anya. Hey. You okay? Look, I know you didn't get any lines this time around, but in the next chapter... Oh, upon reflection, I think it's gonna be fun. I can't wait to see you in a skimpy Magical Girl getup. Ha! The Magical Girl's gonna be the defendant. Maybe the victim? The details are kind of fluid right now. Yeah, well, in Chapter 3, the victim was a street racer. How did that turn out? With these thighs? Bring it on. How skimpy are we talking? Who says that she's the only one, Dylan? <laughs> I'll be in the gym. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Look at all these voice actors and stuff we have now. Look at how, these, look at how intense these credits are as they go on chapter by chapter and get more and more complicated. This is awesome. This is awesome. Once again, an awesome entry in the Nina Aquila series. By the way, as I was recording this, something big happened. This Nina Aquila trilogy is releasing on Steam soon as of this recording, which is uh, March 7th. So maybe by the time we read this, this game is actually going to be like a fully fully on Steam, which is really cool. You can have it on your Steam library. And um, yeah, this game is really cool. I, I kind of wish I knew more about Initial D and stuff, but I just need the general idea from memes and all that. And my brother was really into the series when I was growing up, so I kind of saw it from there. I'm very excited about the theme for the next game, though. Because I'm a fucking weeb, okay? And I know that kind of applies to everything so far, but magical girls are like fan service time, right? So that's good, right? More fan service is good with me. I'm a degenerate. So I don't know. I'm going to hope for the best. Hope for the best. Whoever, whoever ends up doing art for it, make sure you make it extra spicy. All right. Anyways, <laughs> Ethan Fox, thank you so much for another awesome game. Thank you for helping me promote my videos about your game. And I can't wait to play Chapter 4, man. I can't wait to play Chapter 4. You guys should all support him on itch.io. Follow his Twitter, join his Discord, do whatever you want. Just, just appreciate his work because it deserves appreciation. So thank you guys so much for watching. We have finished Nina Aquila Legal Eagle 3. And what comes up next in our, on our channel? I don't know. But I'll find something cool, hopefully. <laughs> so I hope you guys are all having a great day. Thank you guys for following me along on this journey. And I'll see you guys in the next series. See ya!